Hi, we're here today with Rebecca Stokes. She's the Virtual Academy second grade teacher at Red Oak Elementary School and the newest teacher of the year at Red Oak Elementary School. Um, she has done such a good job organizing her Virtual Academy for her parents and her students. So she's just gonna share a couple of tips that might help some of the other teachers who are Virtual Academy teachers as well. So Rebecca, take it away. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm hoping that anything that I show you today is helpful, but if you um, have any questions, of course, email uh, Miss Acock or you can email me about anything that I talk about in this video as well. Um, so virtual learning has been interesting for everyone this year for sure, but now that we're getting towards the end, I feel even more comfortable with it now, um, of course, because of Kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't but um so the first thing i wanted to show you guys was our second grade website this has been really really helpful um as just a landing space for parents so we try and put everything we possibly can um on here any information whatsoever so um we have a parent resources location where we have um absence policies, our homework policies, our daily expectations, our PBIS, and just our daily schedule. Um, and then at the beginning of the year, the school supply list. But the biggest thing that's been really beneficial is we do this weekly seesaw assignment. And Caroline, or Ms. Acock, please let me know if I'm ever not sharing. <laughs> You're good. Um, You're sharing. So um, even it goes back to the very beginning of school. So every week, we post a link to a schedule of what's happening in second grade. So the student and parent just have to click here and then they will see a daily breakdown of what is gonna be on Seesaw that does not require a response. So like here, they need to review their letter land words, but then they see in this column that they do have to turn in a math activity, a compare and contrast and pronoun. So it goes every day and it shows them exactly what's gonna be posted, what page numbers their stories in, um, and anything that we are expecting a response in Seesaw. So that has been really helpful. And it's just nice to be able to always direct parents to that website where they can find everything. So yeah, and I'm sure it helps teachers have to not have to funnel through so many repetitive questions from parents if everything is laid out for you clear as day right there. You, yeah. Like you said, you can refer them back to that. Yeah, at the beginning of the year, it was a lot of dojo messages of please refer to the website and they'd be like, oh, everything's here. So yes, those first two weeks, it was really helpful to just be able to say everything you need is on our website. Um, because even, let's see, if we go back to the student resources, we even have a little bit different um, where students can click right here for AR. They have their weekly assignments as well. Um, and then the Zoom links, like it just tells them where they can find it in their Seesaw. So we kind of gave them a little direction of this is how you get to it instead of just posting it right there. Yeah, that's great. For security purposes, we always need to make sure our Zoom links are in your LMS, um, which are Seesaw and Google Classroom for our elementary folks. Yes. Um, so I think that's everything from the website that I wanted to show, um, but I wanted to go just into Seesaw because Seesaw and me have become good friends. So. Yeah, so <laughs> Seesaw is pretty awesome once you, you yeah. have to dive into it, but it, it's a great resource. Yes, so I have found the biggest um, advantage for me um, is I'm trying to see if I can do something with like a sample student. I don't want to show the um, activities, but when a student is responding and we all have had those students that turn in something that we're not exactly 100% pleased with the answer. So if they like submit something to me, I'm just gonna submit it as a, um, as a student. So then I can show you guys what, um, what I'm talking about. Um, when I go into grade, I have found students don't read the comments or if you're a lower grades, then they might not know what you're writing. Um, so I have found that using this little microphone button right here, I record over every single one of their pages and tell them like, I need you to look at this answer right here. I really want you to add more description. And I love that it records my screen 
and then saves it as a little video. So on the first page, the students will see a video with a little play button. They click it and they can see me going through everything I need them to fix. That has been the biggest thing because there were so many times that students would send work back without changing anything. And I was just getting so frustrated because if I was in class with them, I'd be pulling them back to my table and we'd be interacting, talking to each other about what we needed to correct. So that has been the biggest lifesaver right there so, is that microphone. <laughs> so it, it records you circling things? Yes, it records all the annotations. It records if I move to a different page, it records that and it's recording my voice at the same time. And students are still able to go in and edit what they need to edit. Yes. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So, I, I um, didn't know that all of that was encompassed in that one little yeah. button. And so the only thing I did learn is it posts the video like a picture right over their their um, first page. So you actually have to shrink it down and then they'll I'll kind of put it in the gotcha. right hand corner or something. But yeah, it records everything. It's awesome. I, I was like, I thought it just recorded my voice. So when I realized what it did, I was like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, especially for math. That's where my brain goes to when you if you yeah. were to show them how to work out the problem and use the 10 frame, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yes. Um, so that's been a big help. And then I think just the students know every day what to expect. So I'm going to just show you guys my schedule. So I've already got stuff scheduled for the next two weeks. Um, but if I go, I don't want to go too fast. But if I go here, let me go to Monday. So on Mondays, they know that they're going to have their second step. They know they're going to have their math. They know that they're going to have their grammar skill. Um, so it's really, it's a routine for them because they know that they're going to have at least three assignments a day and they can always go back here and see, oh, I have my SEL, I have my math, I have my, you know, reading story, um, whatever it is, and we post all of that. So we will post a read aloud of their story every single week. We post their writing for the week. And another big thing, I know that we all have to have our recorded lessons, um, but on our recorded lessons, we have a homework help um, video as well as us recording the lesson um, that we did in class. So they have that every day as well. That's awesome. Um, I know that parents especially probably like having that extra resource in case they didn't get it during the main lesson, they can go through um, that extra help from, is it Embark or Eureka? Um, yeah, I think this is the one that was um, Eureka, but okay. it's the ones that are on YouTube that actually um, go over some of the homework questions. So that's what we felt like was um, helpful for them. Um, okay, so another really big thing for me this year was with the math. Um, I absolutely hate trying to annotate on the screen with a mouse. <laughs> so um, I was using the webcam that the district provided for a while. And then um, our principal actually got um, another camera for us that's a little bit taller. But what I do is I print out our math that we're doing that day. So we know if um, working with Karen that we're doing these word problem types. And then what I do is I know teachers all have these is I use all of my colorful flare pins, but I um, the students get to pick the color. So I'll pull out my little flower pot of pins and they get to pick their favorite color. And then I'm doing the math with them so they can actually see my writing of what we're doing. Um, and then it's in fun colors too. And I know that seems like really silly, but the students really like it because it's bright, it's colorful, it's showing them clearly what it is, and then they're able to see it on their screen because I'm sharing it through the document camera. So you can kind of just see some of the work that we've been doing this week. But and it it, it makes me so happy to just see math and all these colors. <laughs> I mean, I know I love colorful pens as an adult, so I can only imagine how the students love them. And yeah. then that's just another tool in your tool belt for student engagement because I mean that that really seems like a big deal when it comes to virtual academy because you do have to keep those kids engaged and wanting to come to your zoom classes right yeah so i will go to my class dojo and i'll have it do a random and it'll pick somebody so i put my phone right here and i'm like okay who who gets to do it this time and we randomly pick and then they they already know like i picked blue like so <laughs> they get to since they're not in class with me, like being able to be up at the board, we're trying to make it as fun as we can. So, and I, I love it. it. Yeah. Oh, and then of course, brain breaks. Brain breaks are a big thing too with virtual learning. I've been doing these things on YouTube. They're called Would You Rather? 
and it incorporates um, exercise. So I recommend that for some brain breaks too. Nice. So I know um, Rebecca is in second grade, so she um, has Seesaw, but for Google Classroom users in grades three through five, there's also a random student picker, but you have to be using an app. So you have to be on your phone or a tablet or something to be able to use that. Um, also, another thing that Rebecca said was there, she's using a webcam right now. She did not spend 200 plus dollars on a document cam that really what you're paying for is the tower that it that it's on right um right. so using a webcam um the district provided you an external one or you could go to target and pick one up for 20 30 dollars um you can quickly turn that into a document cam and have the same setup that rebecca has there yes i i used the district one for quite a while i used it from my car when i was teaching from my car for a little bit so it's great so use it as a as a dot cam for sure yes that's a loyal teacher right there <laughs> teaching from her car um, when she had to um, not be at school for a while. Nice. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, we really appreciate it. And, and it goes back to planning. Um, as a teacher, you have to make sure that you have everything planned out for you, the students, and the parents so that everything goes smoothly. Yes. Yes. Okay, Definitely. Rebecca. Well, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you.